Thank you, panel. My name is Suns Fan. Joining me is my good friend Jenkins. How are you doing, Jenkins Dota? Did it actually say Jenkins Dota? No. no that would have been funny. But yeah, that's a reference to yesterday. So it wasn't get funny it the way I did it. No. It okay, thank you. That's okay. Um, yeah, ready for a great game here. I think, um, based on what the panel said, I think I agree with most of the stuff. Um, I will say, I think I picked Secret to win this game 2-0 today. Uh, not because Execration didn't impress me yesterday, they really did, but uh, I was expecting Secret to come in with some improvements and having learned something from their series yesterday. And I think that one of the things they really took away was that they need to have stronger teamfight and late game insurance. In this game, they've got Darkseer Invoker and a Sven to scale with. So, mm -hmm. uh, and in addition to that, they have some pretty good targeted stuns way of starting fights. But I gotta say though, I, I love ex I love the way Execration played many of the games yesterday. I think that the thing that really stood out for me was the spell casting. I think they're one of the best teams here at comboing spells and they keep picking to their strengths. I love to see it. Kunke is a catch, Mars is a setup, AA once again. They have Arrow to follow through on multiple things like Arena or X Mark and I love seeing when a team has a clear identity and an idea of how they should play and they really execute it. Um, I guess the one limiting factor is maybe they're a little bit pigeonholed because of that, if they want to play like that every game. But if they execute like yesterday, they could they could definitely take this game. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised to see that they they only split all their games. Because right now, Execration has three ties, Seeker has two. Yep. I mean, to get top two, I would think you need to go 2-0 against somebody. Yeah, you need so to win. You got to start racking up these wins uh, in quick succession, or else you're going to be... I mean, it's only the top two that move on. So, uh, for a team, especially like Seeker, with all these expectations, obviously we talked about they've already made it to TI, so maybe the pressure isn't on, but you need to stay in good form. And to do that, you know, you need to start winning. As we're going to see, Yo Wei is going to be playing uh, the Kunkka mid, which I have been waiting to see. I've heard about a lot of different potential builds. I'm not sure if we're going to see anything crazy, but I think the offlane Kunkka is what we is what I've been hopefully going to be, or what I've been hoping to see in this tournament, where you go for like the torrent storm and the shard, and you go all these weird items that you're not used to seeing in a particular game, but. Right. I'm, I'm guessing this will be just a more of a standard Kanka build. Yeah, you know, something I was hoping we would get to see, because I'm really impressed by that, that route. So to clarify, uh, Kunke with the new talents and the setup, the way that he can do it, he has a level 10 talent that gives him torrent knockup slash stun duration, and then he has a level 15 talent that gives him torrent damage. And combined, those two talents makes every torrent deal 500 damage, and then you get the eggs and get torrent storm. Uh, and on top of that, you can get the shards. You have like all this repositioning magic damage utility build, uh, which I think can be really cool if your other heroes can carry. But in this game, with a Mars offlane, like you said, it's more likely Kunkka will go for more of a, yeah. a right-click heavy build with something like a, maybe an Armlet, Daedalus, uh, these kind of items that core Kunkkas will usually do historically to dish out the damage. Oh, well, he's dishing out a lot of damage right now against Nisha. He's already relatively low HP. It's a great Kunkka matchup. <clears throat> I mean, look at the CS right now. 7-4 to four versus 1-1 one to one for yeah. Nisha. So, I mean, he's not Exord, obviously, so uh, last hits will be a little bit more difficult to come by. Well, what are your thoughts on going the, the Quas Wex build this game for Invoker? Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's decent. You, if you were to go Exort, I think your lineup would be too slow and too greedy. You already have a Sven, he wants to farm Ancients, he wants to play jungle, and you want someone to pair with your other heroes that want to be active. Clockwork plays well with Invoker, in my opinion, when he goes Quaswex. It's a great setup for EMP. He does a lot of damage with Cold Snap together with Battery Assault. Um, it's a good hero for Hoodwink to play around. Like, basically all of Secret's heroes except Sven really just want to group up and find kills with Invoker. So, uh, and in addition to that, EMP is amazing against non-int cores, and you have Mars, Kunkka, and Ursa. These heroes get EMP'd, that's all your mana gone. Like, their mana pools are like 500 or less on all three heroes when you get to that early mid-game stage, so it's it seems pretty solid. But yeah, he's getting absolutely annihilated in lane. Yeah, it's not <clears throat> it's not remotely close right now. I, I mean, mean look at the last hits in general. Player. Right now, Execration's owning all three lanes. Uh, even the Mars is having a great time. He's pretty much even with oh, Nisha's position one. Die. Yeah, Nisha gets hit by the... No, he will go in Viz, so that'll save him no sentry there for Yoe. But still, crushing this lane. In fact, getting something like that off where you have to walk back to base or wait for a salve to come, sometimes just works out into your benefit if you're Kanka. 
I mean, the thing about like the Quas Wex build, you, you have this regen, but against the Conk, he's doing tons of burst. Mm -hmm. So you could get this kill theoretically uh, if you're Yoway. Yeah, and it, not just that. It's not just the burst. It's also just like <clears throat> mathematically in the start, Quas cannot keep up with Tidebringer. It's just it's just too much early on. When Invoker gets level five, I think he stabilizes a lot more here. Uh, but this is. Definitely a Kunkka favored lane, and Yowei is playing Oof. completely to his strengths. Like it's, he's doing exactly what you need to do. If you're playing Kunkka against Invoker, you ensure the CS every single Tidebringer needs to connect on Invo, and he has to buy a salve, like you said. So not only is he behind by 10 CS here, but he's also expending gold into regen, whereas Kunkka can just buy all these stats with a double bracer into bottle build. Oh uh, man, double really? brace? That's like an, uh, I'm gonna say old skill. That's like a year ago, people were getting this literally every game, and then they nerfed bracers. Mm. I haven't been seeing it as much as we're gonna see. Uh, RR inside some cog action from Yapsor. Not, not the. I mean, Yapsor. How greedy can you be on a clockwork? I mean, when I think of him, I don't think a clockwork. Just no. because it's not really a greedy support. Definitely not. Um, the hero obviously does have farming potential globally with Rocket Flare. When you get levels in that, you can take some farm, and uh, you can push waves and kill jungle camps with battery assault. But it's definitely not one of the best heroes to do it with. Man. Nisha is just non-stop getting pressured here, which is. I mean, really if you're secret, do you think they should make some sort of rotation? Oh, as we say that, I believe we do see somebody there, but uh, let's see if they can actually help out. It might be just fairing at the bottle there. Yeah. yeah. Clockwork level 2 is not very scary. And the the thing you do ensure by going these two bracers is multiple things. First of all, you have the regen, so if Invoker pokes back, you're, you're still going to stay relatively healthy. And just this massive boost to your flat HP makes it way less appealing for Clockwork to come gank. You saw this is a level 2 Clockwork. If he's level 3, I still don't think they kill. Like, it's just... Get it cutting through 1200 HP with these two heroes is really, really difficult. Yeah, oh, Matu. Oh, oh. I thought that was going to connect from Puppy, but first not to be, blood. and the right click will be enough. So, after all this, First Blood is top lane. Still for Execration, though, as they're still doing very well in all three lanes, as we can see. Uh, Matu, 27 and 0 in terms of CS, we're going to see Zai get pressured out now. I mean, these are pretty tough lanes for Secret. This is the most one sided first five minutes we've had in a game so far. We cast four games yesterday. Hey, it's, it's 2K, a 2K already. 2K goal lead minute five. Yeah, that's Secret are gigantic. Getting bodied. Now, one way back, of course, is Ancient Stacks for Sven, which I'm not sure if we're seeing that come to fruition as of yet. But, I mean, there's already a century to make sure that's not getting blocked for, for Secret, but in that triangle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, great, great, great stuff from Execration so far. You can see a little bit of pressure coming onto your way in mid out of Nisha. He's trying to at least stand his ground, but didn't really accomplish much except just do a little bit of damage. And another benefit, just to finish off these bracers, is whenever you get max HP on Kunkka, you just make your ulti that much stronger, right? Yeah. So damage mitigation. Having having base HP on, on this hero is really, really good. Nisha. Going to get X'd. They have an arrow ready to connect. This is problems. Yep. No mana on the way, but it's not really going to matter too much as more rotations come in. So an easy kill to add insult to injury. BDZ. It's just going to get barely pressured here from Yapsar. Rune is bottom. It's an illusion as we see bot lane Zai getting chased by Palos, who I believe has that orb of corrosion. So, yeah. This is looking a very rough for Secret. Not exactly what I was expecting to see. I mean, this is a team we talked about how they, mm -hmm. they get off to really good starts just by out-farming the opponent, but they're just losing. It looks like every single lane right now. I'd say just theoretically, the lane that surprises me the most is bottom. I think the other two lanes, Execration, are inherently favored. Kunkka, at this level of play, a good Kunkka beats Invoker every time. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter. If if Invoker goes XR, it's the same story. He will still lose. And in the top lane, Hoodwink 5 is just weak. Palace, he already has his ultimate, so Popsy and Rage going to mitigate a lot of that damage. Gets vacuum backed in, though. Does Secret have enough oh. damage to actually... No. Yapsor is not not fast He's enough to catch up. Somehow got away from the clockwork there, and that's kind of surprising. There must have been, they must have had some bad luck with that vacuum. He must have got behind the tree line or something to not get caught in the battery. But oh, look at these stacks on Matu. We see Yoe now here with the boat. Arrow's gonna connect as well. Oh my, this is so bad for Secret. They're gonna get the stacks and the kill. Yikes! Oh my goodness. And they get a possess mask. Unbelievable trade here, Cinder. And holy jeez. At least it's their own. If they stole secrets, possess <laughs> yeah, mask, true, that true. would have been even worse. But yeah. Awesome stuff from Execration. Who was it we saw yesterday Radiance with the, the morph invasion? That was Gambit, I think. It was Lorenoff who made a similar play against um, the Medusa. That, that was right? secret as well. It's the same story. Secret had stacked the jungle for their Medusa played by Matsu, and then mm -hmm. Lorenoff just went in there on Morphling and stole it. And Execration were like, that's a cool play. We'll do that Dyer's ourselves today. Seems like Secret have this approach to it. But yeah, 
this is one of the things, in my opinion, that you sign up for when you pick Hoodwink 5. I think this hero is just not very strong in lane as a 5, especially if the carry in lane is not a true bully. And Sven is not strong. Like, mm -hmm. this hero needs time, he needs to build up. You have a bit of a stun and a right click, but you're not like, let's say, Gyrocopter or an Ursa that can really just get in there and do all the damage. Because what Hoodwink will offer you is a little bit of a slow and a stun, but its damage is not wild until you hit that level 6 mark. So, the Execration know this very well and are just taking advantage of it. Puppy yeah, Nico trouble. finds Puppy again. Uh, Not e no need for the Mars Arena because he had just used it to kill Puppy a couple seconds ago, so no TP for him. Well, he'll get a new one. That's one of the great benefits of dying these days, I suppose. But what, what position do you like uh, the Hoodwink? Because every game that I've seen, like in the NADPC, which it was picked, I think, more than any other region, was position four almost every single time. And it looked, at first I was a little skeptical, but it looked, did look pretty good as BDZ getting pressured here. Of course, Yaps are only level four right now. Dyer's top tower and has top fallen. tier one tower will be taken out without any defense from Secret. In my in my opinion, Hoodwing is just not a first pick hero. I, I just I don't think it's good enough. Um, I think it has too many weaknesses against specific heroes, like heroes that cut trees, mm. heroes that have a natural way of being mobile, like fast traveling, or uh, heroes that are strong in lane. You're seeing oh, some of the weaknesses Mars already. Arena. Zai's in quite a bit of trouble into the arrow. Great setup. It's going to be more than enough damage to take out Zai. Now the tier one tower does fall. Actually, no, they defended it with just a little HP here. It's Yapsor now. Going to find the arms of Yowei with that X into boat. Nico will not fall for this, so it's going to be a two for nothing. Feels like Execration's just getting literally everything they want. Yep. There's only one hero thriving right now in Secret, and that's Matu. And he is still behind the Ursa in a 10 as Sven. As Sven. Because yeah. um, his big stack's got largely stolen. He did get some of the first stack before he got killed by the boat the previous fight, but... Yeah, Execration is just doing everything right. It's what I've been talking about. They're just doing, just doing such a good job rotating and casting spells off each other. That was what impressed me the very most with them yesterday. It wasn't like the drafts are solid. They're not like super creative or innovative. They just work. Like it's heroes that combo. It's heroes that have stun. It's good lanes. And then they just execute. It's it's Radiant nice and it's straightforward. It's very easy to understand as a spectator what they're trying to do. And sometimes you can say that's a weakness. It's like, well, then the other team obviously understands it too. Well, you got to outplay them then. <laughs> right. It's one thing you know they're going to do, but can you beat it, right? Yeah, and we're continuing to see this build from Ursa, where you go for the fast defusal blades. So you're not going any type of farming mechanic, because yeah. that's kind of his, that, that was his biggest weakness for a long time, not being able to farm the jungle. And then you just start getting Battle Fury as of the last year and a half or so. But this feels like it's more of a snowball thing, where you're you're up, you're going to be able to continue to chase. You have Orbit Corrosion on top of that, so mm -hmm. it's going to be really difficult to get away from Ursa. Defusal blade is super good against Sven. I think... Something to keep an eye out for Secret now is when they identify that this build is coming out, you need to reserve... I think you need to reserve the, the Surge for Sven. Mm. He has to be able to reset out when he gets defusal because it's one of the few carries that Sven can't just fight head-to-head -head if they have a similar net worth at this stage of the game. Like, Ursa's gonna just destroy you. You're, you're not winning the trade. Uh, whether you have Warcry on or not, it's gonna be too much, so... Nisha already expended the tornado. Yowei is here. He's gonna get hook shot. AA blast is coming. It'll connect on basically nothing there. The boat comes out. It's only gonna connect on one in the meantime. This will be a big kill for Secret. They have strength in numbers, so they do take out Yowei, and it looks like it'll stop there. But Matu did pop that out. We'll see if they try to go for some more. Maybe there's some stacks in the jungle for him. Yeah. Good call from Secret. Th that's the kind of move that you don't have very much time to make, but Kunko was just out of position for two seconds there, and they immediately Dyer's pounced on that, so very nicely done. They're going to try to snowball a little bit off it. Immediate follow-up smoke. No hookshot now, of course, so I'll have to do it the, the slow way with engaging, and uh, I don't think they're really... They're not really primed to find anything here, but they're at least going to get out some some vision. Yeah, what do you think? Like when when that hook shot is down, they don't really have much initiation. No, the really here goes for some like a blink dagger build. Yeah, and I will never really consider Hoodwink a cash. It's like she's a really good follow up, but it's not reliable, right? You have a spell that needs to be around trees. It has a projectile that is relatively easy well, to the dodge. The great thing is you can so. place a tree, Cinder. I don't know if you know about that. That takes know, it takes so long. I know your favorite mechanic in the game is the fact that you can eat the tree from a bushwhack and it takes off bushwhack. Yeah, I think that's 
completely unnecessary. I don't know why I mean, you, it does you think that. the hero's not good anyway, right? But, I mean, we, we see teams picking no, it up, so maybe so, there's something there. No, so the thing is, I don't think Hoodwink is a bad hero. I just think it needs conditions to be met, and that's why I don't like it being first picked. There are some, like, say a hero like AA. You don't, in this patch, I feel like you don't feel bad first picking AA, because you can pick, like, some sort of combos. You know you have something against healing, which is an integral right. part of late game. So you have, like, that in Oh, boy. Mars Arena, double damage on Nico as well. Oh Rebuke yes. and the AA Blast. Very easy killing. Yaps are just going to be the food to clean up the play for BDZ. That's a double kill for him. Gets a 13-minute Vessel on Nirana. That is really, really good timing for these two kills coming I mean, out. What's your condition here for Seeker? Obviously, Monka needs to farm. He needs stacks. But how do you stack for him when Execration is being so active? I mean, they're getting Roche, for God's sake. I, I, think, I think it's pretty difficult right now. If the lanes go this badly and the enemy team is just running at you like this and take the top tier one tower, your options on the map are very, very limited. I, I, the way I see it, you gotta try to get Sven a BKB before you fight, even. I, I just, I don't think, oh, uh -oh. he's farming in the jungle, he's yeah. gonna call it. X marks into folks. TPs are coming as well. And this is gonna be a very, very easy kill, again, for Execration. I got Diffuse will like, just go to work. He just yeah. absolutely slapped him. There's nothing he could do. That didn't really look like a slap, but maybe we come from different backgrounds, Cinderin. <laughs> A mauling. Yeah, that's that's more like it. I mean, have you seen a bear in real life? They don't slap. Uh, we don't have bears in Denmark. Oh, that's interesting. Tell me another interesting fact about Denmark. Um, you know, we're making a joke that in, in America we call Danish, like pastries, just Danish. And you guys just... We call them Vienna bread. Yeah, you call them Vienna bread. It's very odd. Nobody wants to take credit or responsibility. <laughs> oh. um, Hookshot actually connects with the cogs there. Aegis down. Yeah, the old front puppy, that's the Aegis. They can still technically fight here. Yoway comes in, still no boat. A Blast coming in. There's the old front Matu. They're going to be able to take out the Mars very quickly, but it's going to be a trade for Zai. So off lane for off lane, and I believe both teams will just go back to farming. That's... Pretty decent for Seeker. I think at this point, if you trade even, they didn't yeah. even trade even. They got an Aegis too. So that's right. two for one. Uh, Matsu gets to access his triangle freely for a bit. Uh, so that's a, a little bit of a, a breather for Secret here, a little bit of space. Um, but yeah, they definitely they yeah, definitely have some work to do. So I'm, I'm still... Hoodwing is really a hero. I've played it quite a bit, right? And the reason... What I think about it is that the primary reason it gets played more successfully on average as a four than a five is that in my opinion the fives are it's more important that you have good laning presence mm -hmm. whereas for the fours in a lot of matchups where you have another four the there are some threes in the game that are relatively self-sufficient like let's say you're playing hoodwink with i don't know a centaur right uh, if the Centaur gets off to a decent start and has a good matchup, the Hoodwink might not need to be a very big threat in the lane, but therefore he can start taking some space on the map, get some levels, get maybe one key item and start having a bigger impact. But if your 5 is weak and your carry, in this patch the carries are, for the most part, not extremely strong laners, you're leaving yourself susceptible, basically. Um, so on average. The other thing is a lot of the offlaners combo well with the Hoodwink because they have kill potential, right? Like the Centaur again being a great example. You have a lot of spell bursts, you get kills. Hoodwink with Sven don't really have the same thing. And uh, we've definitely seen uh, Execration so far in the game take full advantage of the fact that Hoodwink just isn't a very powerful laner. That's just one lane, though. I mean, they did lose every single Absolutely. lane, right? Yeah, yeah, but Invisibility. it's uh, I mean, either way, 4K network lead for Execration. I mean, if this is 16 minutes. That's quite substantial. It is. Uh, I mean, if you're a secret, what do you, what do you need to do? You, you just need to slow the game down. I mean, Matu's trying to go for a BKB, so that that's obviously a fighting build. That's not really... It's just Echo Saber BKB. It doesn't really have that much damage yet. And he has he has Alacrity, though. That does help him quite a bit. True. It's a Quaswex Invoker, so the attack out. speed will be there. Attack. Um... Yeah, I, I think the name of the game is still just slow it down. Defend your mid tower. Uh, try to defend the bottom tower as well because it gives an access point for Execration to get into the triangle from two angles. And if you can successfully slow it down and maybe... Like, all it's going to take in this game is to get a couple BKBs in one good team fight, right? One thing that the Radiant does not deal with very well is BKBs. It makes Mars very weak. It makes Kunkka relatively weak. It makes Mirana weak. AA, you only have Ice Blast. So... I'm not going to say that a, uh, a Sven with BKB is invincible here, right? But mm -hmm. it at least simplifies things to an extent where if the Ursa is accounted for, I don't think he will die. 
Stop. I'm sitting in Shadow Amulet. Yeah. You're very uh, is this an Overwatch case that I'm watching right now? Very peculiar. Okay. Well, it gives some experience. Yeah, that's true. It's getting something out of it at least. And I think the big fight's going to be for this second rush when it's eventually up. Um, you have a halberd on Kunkka already, so Sven, not even with the BKBs. We're going to see the initiation from Nico again. My goodness, Nisha is just getting wrecked this game hard. Kill after kill, Pre pretty much the last three arenas, I feel like, have been reserved for him. I think this is kind of a pattern that we've been seeing in uh, in some of the games. I, I want to say the SEA and the Chinese teams have put more emphasis on destroying mid uh, than the Western teams have. Like, there was a game yesterday as well with Miracle against Emo, where they, they ganked Miracle's TA mid like three times and the Ember just took off completely. Um, so they seem to be drafting a little bit around these combos that give them the potential to kill mid. And I think that's a really strong way of playing the patch just because, once again, there's plenty of offlaners that can hold their own, right? You have this mm. Mars Ooh. who gets off to a good start and then he's free to move. Oh, Puppy could be in trouble here. If there's a good enrage use here. Oh, he doesn't. <laughs> and no enrage needed. It, it is a hoodwink. <laughs> That's that is truly unfortunate. No, we're gonna see Yoey X back to base here. Oh yeah, Puppy didn't have a stun ready. He used it to farm, so got, he got a couple creeps. I'm sure it was worth it. I mean, he's he's. I mean, th see, when I look at this network uh, distribution for Secret and Yapser is literally last in the game, that's never a good sign for that Secret. That is usually trouble. And right, we're gonna see Moonlight Shadow Nico with the Mars ult again. Looks like he doesn't really want to go for Yapsor. He's like, eh, I guess. Sunstrike is there, but he took a little bit of damage to Mars in the meantime. But here's the counter initiation. Mars ult finally comes out into the boat. A blast to follow. So they finally do get the lowest network hero in the game. It takes quite a bit of effort, though, as Ursa disarmed for the time being. There's the spear, and Puppy's going to die again. That's two back to back deaths. And here's the X into the torrent. Looks like they'll find Zai as well. It's Mati Pop, the that just immediately gets disintegrated by the bear who does not slap Cinderin. How dare you! Close right. call. Yep, Sunstrike not quite enough, and I mean, Seeker get literally nothing out of that, and now the Sven ult on cooldown. I, I don't know how you reaccess the map right now. I really don't. Like, I can tell you from playing games in this position, if you're if you're a lineup that needs to wait for a specific item, and the key to getting that item is having access to your triangle, but you're playing into a team that has twice as good catch as you, and better team fight, and are an item up, you're kind of in desperation mode right now. It's not like coming back from 8k is impossible, but I'm trying to like, you know, when when you're behind, you try to communicate and find a, like a recipe, right? You want to dumb down the fight so that everybody knows, okay, how do we oh, the fight so that we oh, win? Oh boy. goodness, not again. I mean, he has to do stuff like this, so that's the thing. It's not like he's, like once you're down, you have to try to make space where you can. And I mean, you got to give Execration credit. They are just shutting this down hardcore. Not running him over. Like, I, I can't really put a finger on what they've done. I think the only real mistake I've seen in this game was Kunkka's death, death mid. Like, everything else has been super clean. The way they drafted to their lanes, the way they played said lanes, the, the timing that they got Roche, when they invaded, they stole stacks early. Like, this has been tough tier stuff from them. And this is Execration's best game so far. I think they're looking really hot today. Um, but you, you got to wonder for Secret as well. Like, I, I picked Secret to win this series coming in today because I was like, okay, they're going to have learned their lessons from yesterday, but they, they might have overcompensated a little bit in some areas. Like, to me, this looks like a very un, untraditional Secret draft, right? In the sense that usually Secret will ensure their lanes and then build a farming lead, but they, they just have the weaker lanes all around. And Execration are just taking Dyer's taking everything they're given all the time. Yep, taking full advantage for sure. And this is just going to snowball from here. The tier 2 tower looks like Secret might want to defend here. Nisha, yep. you know, a couple levels behind his counterpart, Kunkka mid. And fortifications already popped. And keep in mind that Roshan is coming back shortly, so... That's a big contesting point. Obviously, Execration can take it way faster. And in terms of, I mean, Secret has some good counter initiation. If you get a good vac wall, I mean, that's the beauty of Darkseer. The stronger your opponents get, the stronger your ult becomes. Yeah. But it is difficult to kind of combo with the, the heroes that they have. I mean, it's not like they have the Exhort, like Meteor, into all that Wombo combo right. potential. And I think it's also worth keeping in mind when it comes to wall. Um, Something that's often overlooked is the enemy team's ability to kill the illusions, right? And they have it. They have a lot of AV damage. All right, good right. shot. Matu's gonna pop the ult. Sunstrike to follow. Air's gonna come and connect onto uh, Yapsor for now. Nico actually gets four staff to safety, so he's perfectly fine. Matu pops a newly picked up BKB. And that's it. That is the fight from Secret. That is truly bad. Now Execration just needs to wait out this BKB and or 
The Sven ult. There's a double damage though, so poses a little bit of a threat, I suppose. But yeah, this is all about Roshan. Another minute and a half to go, so kind of a later spawn. But Execration is still looking like they're in the driver's seat right now. For sure. I what? Do you know anything about being in the driver's seat? Do, do you drive? No, I, I don't. Do you have a license? No, I don't. Like, if I gave you the keys to my car, would you be able to drive? No, but I know what it's like being in the passenger seat, and that's where Secret is. So, <laughs> so I can relate. I'm pretty sure they're in the back seat right yeah. now. They're they're in the trunk. They're in the toddler <laughs> little thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's not looking good. And what I was trying to get at before is if you're if you're in this position, you try to you try to make a plan for how to access a fight, right? Like, okay, we're gonna jump Radiant this guy, we're gonna cast our spells this way. This is the key hero that we need to shut down. I'm looking at secret strategy, and I can't really come up with a very good attack plan right now to entering a fight, right? Yeah. Like, who do you go on with who so that it's successful? When you're playing into boat, you're playing into the BKB, you're playing into an Ursa that's just killing everyone. Moonlight Shadow is a problem. You have to conti You have to be able to handle getting ice blasted on your carry basically when you go in because i mean what do you think about like secrets lineup i mean it's easier you know this is hindsight 2020 right. stuff but like their initiation relies on yapsor who is the least farmed player in the entire game like how much of a factor is that because he's going for agonips imagine he had ags already mm -hmm. which he normally would probably mm -hmm. around this time that gives you double initiation it gives you so many more possibilities it's uh, not with necessarily the over, over a clock. problem to build a strategy around the Radiant the four being a bit sacrificial the problem is again how Dyer's badly the lanes went like let's say clockwork has a bad game and everyone else is doing great i think it's okay like you can even play clockwork position five in some I games if your carry is strong enough like a lane like gy gyro position one clock five can totally work even at a pro level. Uh, but again, the recovering from this tough of a start against a team that has so much catch and so good spell casting is always going to be a major challenge. And um, I mean, look yeah. at Zai. He, he has a pipe. That's it. Yeah. This is not normal farm from Secret, that is for sure. And they don't they don't have good physical mitigation, right? Like these Kunkka, Kunkka Cleaves, the, the Ursa are the Rebuke. It's... It's done. We have a problem. smoke from Secret and well, the Marana ult as well, but they're going to catch out the Marana, so they start this fight off 5v4. And of course, Roche is up, and they have to go for this, I feel like. And there is a buyback available on a Marana. Yep. They're going to take a risk here. This could be oh, Jumps in right onto Nisha, absolutely destroying his butt. Goes in, Viz doesn't have any vision for now. Finally finds it. Nico with the Marzal just to ensure that they take out that pesky invoker. Marana did buy back. They, they found the AA as well, so this is now. Now technically a 4v4 as the arrow does connect on Matu. Expect to buy back here on the Evoker potentially. The ghost ship coming in. Connect into the spear as well. They have more than enough damage. And with the dust, Matu finds his way to the grave. And now Execration can do whatever they want. Still buybacks available from Secret, but they're not gonna expend them. So they can find one more kill and likely rush to follow. I just I love watching Execration spell casting. It's like a well-oiled machine. It's so good to watch. Do you know watch. anything about a well-oiled machine as I well? I do. I have been in the passenger seat of many a well-oiled machine in my life. I see. Interesting. Yes. Now, well, what's so beautiful about it is... You, you have a lot of car references, I it, noticed. It, it, it's interesting. Machines don't have to be cars. I know, but that, that one, when you think of a well-oiled machine, you think of a car, at least a normal human does. As wow. All right, well, he's actually going to tick out in the in the yeah. fountain with the Dyer's ice blast. I don't know. I think of a machine, and a machine could be a lot of things. So you, when you say a well-oiled machine, you think of a coffee machine? Is that what you're trying to say? A meat grinder. A meat grinder? Yes. That's very specific, and it actually speaks volumes to your person. It makes a lot of sense now, yes. your upbringing. Yes. Okay. As Palos, well, we have the Aegis, we have the Shard now, so anytime he uses Earthshock, he will get a 1.5 second Enrage buff, which, again, we talked about this yesterday, I think is a top five Shard in the entire game. Very good. Extremely good. I mean, it's always nice to... Like when you get the second rush, you want to give it to your your carry or your mid, typically. Mm -hmm. Usually, yeah. But sometimes there's a you know there's better shards to give it to technically, right? But this this is the best shard and it's on your carry, so it works yeah. uh, both ways here. Uh, yeah. The, the Kunkka shard could have also been interesting. I think it's a. Uh, you actually think it's good? I, I feel like it's a meme. It, it's really like I feel like on any hero where you just get an additional <laughs> ability that has damage and repositioning potential. That's powerful. Right? Yeah, but the repositioning could like screw everything up, right? It can because it's a well-oiled machine, and if you add patch notes to well-oiled machine, you, I mean you can't do that. Have you seen it? it doesn't work that Have way. Have you seen execration spell casting? Do you think that's gonna mess them up? Yes. Okay. If you've never bought it before and you buy it for the first time, yeah. Yeah. Of course they've played with Kukashard. <laughs>
you know, I, they're assuming a lot of things. I've seen some Kunkka players with a lot of games that are buying Shard this patch, and they just have so much control. Like, right. the fact that you can, it, it's kind of like a pseudo Xbox, even in some situations, where you can torrent and then tidal wave people into the torrent. And I think tidal wave gets a lot better when you have Axe. So I guess from that perspective, since he went for the physical build with Halberd, right. yep, maybe he doesn't take it, but when you have Torrent Storm, it's actually super annoying, because usually, like, in fights, people will oh, very chaotic. the storm, right? They will, they will try to get oh, around it. Oh, okay, Puppy's dead again. It's fine. Keep, to keep talking. How's, how's Puppy doing this game? I feel like he's only died. Okay, 1, 5, and 1. He's, he has more farm than Yapsor still. Yeah, he has. Well, I mean, yeah. He's basically positioned for Hoodwink. I think this might be Yapsor's lowest CS ever, minute 28. No joke. It might be the least CS he's ever had. He has 18 creeps. Yeah, that's... I, I don't remember seeing... Like, when he plays Clock, even, he'll usually have at least, like, double this or triple. But there's just been nothing to claim. The map has just been on lockdown. I mean, again, this is less about Seeker playing poorly, in my opinion. It's more about Execration just playing godlike right now. They're doing everything right. They really, they really are. I mean, plenty of time on Aegis. You really hate to lose it here. Nice sidestep of the Sun Strike, which he definitely knew was coming. And we'll take you back to base. X mark for the refill. The neutral. Oh, Titan Sliver. Very sliver nice. Sliver is very good. Okay. Serious time. Okay. Out that, that means not serious time. Exactly. Out of your teammates that you get in your pubs, how many? How big a percentage do you think call it Titan Silver, and how many call it Titan Silver? I would say more than half say Silver. Yeah. Even, so even in when, <laughs> when you when you asked what that was, was that a test for me? Yeah. Huh? Was it, were you testing how I would say it? No, I mean I said it for you. I said Sliver. Oh, did you? Yeah. No, you said what neutral item is? <laughs> oh, I did. Actually, true. Yeah. It right. was. Yeah. You, you always test me. And I love it. Uh, initiation on like Tanisha. Enrage yeah. is popped. That was actually the ultimate and not his shard. Mm -hmm. They're going to reset here as the, the cold feet onto Yapsor. And it will actually proc. Just coming in into yeah. the X, and that's an easy kill on Yapsor again. So tier 2 to follow in all likelihood. I mean, the wall has already been placed as well, so Palace with that Aegis should be able to go in anytime he wants. Oh, nice tornado actually disrupts the Nico Mark ult, so didn't that wasn't able to get that off, but... That was very fortuitous. That tornado was actually not intended for him. But he blinked into it. Yeah, I do that a lot. Oh, Puppy. Puppy. Yeah, looks like he's done though. Needs the help from Nico though, so... That'll be an easy one as I. Kind of on the outskirts of this fight. I mean, they do have buybacks on Secret, so they probably have one fight in them here. They forced the BKB on Matsu as well with oh, Ice yeah. Vortex into Arrow. He had to BKB that. Yeah. He's scared of dying. And look at that. He's actually going Ags, which is like not the typical thing on Sven anymore because they just lack initiation right now. I mean, typically, if you're going to get that, you, you want a lot more farm first, right? right? It feels like kind of a desperation mode, which is obviously pretty understandable. He, they, they need the big combo, right? They need vacuum into Stormhammer. And they need the moment that Stormhammer connects, they need a big amount of damage, so... That Crystalis. Oh, here's the Mars ult onto two. No BKB for Mr. Matu. The Ice Blast will finish him off. Yapsor next on the list. And this is a huge stop in Execration's favor. It's going to be a 1-0 start for them again. Both teams have split every single series they've played so far. And they both desperately need a 2-0 at some point. As Nisha, they have the vision, and they have the kill. If Secret don't clean this up for the next game, this is going to be a 2-0. They, they look absolutely just lost. Yeah, they look pretty game. lost here. But, but the thing is, I don't... I, I feel like it's very easy to look lost when you lose all three lanes and your tower and Roche this fast and your lineup works like this. So you, you gotta draft differently. Like for me this really, it comes back to the draft that you're setting yourselves up to kind of have to massively outplay. Uh -huh. Whereas Execration, if they perform their strategy well and do the lanes well, which I think they overperform, maybe, not necessarily for them, but they won probably by more than I would have expected on average in these three lanes. Especially bottom. Like the Ursa was 1000 net worth ahead of Darkseer minutes 6 or something. It was yeah. pretty crazy. Uh, if you're going to show up like this today, Secret really need to get back to the drawing board. And I think what they should adjust for, for game number two, they need to have stronger lanes and they need to be able to fight them head on. Like, they actually just have to. Yeah, they're going to hold on for one more potential wombo combo. Matu about a thousand away from finishing up his Ags. So he'll be able to travel with his storm hammer. He almost needs to do it on his own, though. Invoker's damage. I mean, is even very with that. I mean, again, obviously they're severely underfront, but just a crystalis. That that's not really that much damage. Oh. Oh, spear will miss. A blast coming in though. Maku getting chased. Yeah, he's inside the arena now, and this is going to be a relatively easy kill. The BKB is popped by Palos, and he just absolutely crushes them. Buyback onto Maku. So the dreams of an Aghanim Scepter are long gone. Vacuum into basically nothing. Boat actually hits two. And it looks like Execration wants to reset now that the buyback has come to fruition for Matu. And they could 
They technically could go back in if they really want, but they have expended most of their ults here. Let's see if Seeker can find any, any outskirts here. All right, Bushwhack connects on one. Oh, Radiance top I think Execration. Yep, X marks into. Yep, BKB for Nisha. And yet another BKB usage just to run away. It feels like the, the whole game has been like that for, for Seeker. Defensive BKBs, can't use it to fight. Yeah. Not able to really connect on their, like, the quote-unquote combo or wombo combo potential. The palace has played extremely well on the Ursa. Has the Satanic now, as we're going to see. Oh, that, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was intended, but that worked out relatively well. Bobby, here we go. This is the potential here inside a closed quarter area. Back into the wall. Yeah, the cogs are just oh, screwing no. everything up. Nobody can figure out where the hell they're padding. Bobby pops the BKB, pounding up on Yoe. But now he's stuck inside the arena into an arrow. That's technically a dieback. And I expect a GG here at any moment. I, I've been there as clockwork, there you know? Is. You get this three-man catch, you really want to cog, and now your Sven can't get in it. Yeah. Yeah, Matsu was actually blocked out from getting in. Some good damage that he could have maybe found two kills.